In this short video, I would like to introduce one of the ways that mixing can influence crystallization processes. For this study, an anti-solvent crystallization process was characterized. Specifically, this is the crystallization of benzoic acid from ethanol water solutions using water as the anti-solvent itself. And one of the original goals of this study was to really try and map a design space and develop a seeding strategy for this crystallization process. The crystallizer configuration is shown uh, on the right hand side here and we can see we're actually studying this crystallization using a number of analytical techniques including React IR and particle track. One of the things that became apparent very early in the characterization of this process was the influence of the addition rate of antisolvent on the metastable zone width. Typically what one would expect for a classical crystallization is that as the addition rate increases and the rate of supersaturation generation increases, the metastable zone width would get wider. But for this system, we actually did not see that occurring. What in fact we saw is that there was very little variation in the metastable zone width as the addition rate increased. And what we also observed is that the consistency of the metastable zone width measured deteriorated significantly at higher addition rates. And what that means for this process is that it becomes very difficult to seed the process because what can potentially happen is the uh, crystals begin to nucleate at times that cannot be uh, predicted, meaning the seed may be added after the crystals have already nucleated. It means the process is not going to be repeatable and we could result in purity and particle size distribution issues. So based on this uh, result of an initial characterization, the question was posed, how can this be scaled up? How can a seeding strategy be implemented? And can we model this behavior? So one way to look at anti-solvent addition crystallizations is from the mixing perspective. And it's beyond the scope of this video to get into a huge amount of detail around the theory of mixing for crystallization processes. But I have outlined a number of really seminal papers in this area which go into great detail on how crystallization processes uh, can be modeled from a mixing perspective. But essentially at a very high level overview, there's three different types of mixing that need to be considered for crystallization. The first would be macro mixing at the kind of bulk level of the crystallizer itself. The second would be the meso mixing time scale, which is at the frame of reference around where the antisolvent is added, essentially the plume of antisolvent that gets added to the bulk solution. And then finally, the micro mixing, which is at a much smaller scale. For antisolvent addition crystallization, the hypothesis we made was that really this uh, meso mixing time scale would be important for this crystallization process because it's really at the scale where the antisolvent gets added to the bulk solution. So the question became, could we use CFD, computational fluid dynamics, to try and understand meso mixing time scales for our system? And one way this can be kind of neatly represented is to actually look at the crystallization of benzoic acid by adding water as an antisolvent to uh, ethanol water solutions. And what we can see here is that as we add water to the saturated solution, crystallization occurs pretty immediately in this case. Then what we did is a second experiment where we repeated the essentially the exact same experiment where we're adding the same amount of water at the same rate to the same saturated solution. But instead of adding it through a pipe with a very wide diameter, we essentially use a narrow diameter pipe and the water gets jetted into the solution. And in this case, what we actually see is no crystallization occurring in the second case. Uh, what we're actually seeing here is actually bubbles forming as the jet, jet goes in, but they soon flow to the top and no actual crystals come out of solution in this case. So even though we're doing the exact same thing to this process, the only change we're making is the diameter of the addition pipe. It's this meso mixing that is really affecting our crystallization process and whether it crystallizes or not. So this behavior can be modeled using computational uh, fluid dynamics. And what we can see here is that we model the behavior of our crystallization process by doing tracer experiments that show the antisolvent being incorporated into our crystallizer. And this is where the antisolvent, just like for our experiments that we showed earlier, is added close to the wall of the crystallizer. 
Now, using these computational fluid dynamic models, we can actually calculate the various mixing timescales. And the one we want to focus on here is one of these meso mixing timescales. And what we're going to try and do is see if these meso mixing timescales actually predict our crystallization performance. So we know that we have a consistent crystallization process at these low addition rates, and then we know we have a very inconsistent crystallization process at these very high addition rates. This is where the error bars for these measurements really begin to increase. So what we tried to do was correlate this to the meso mixing time scale. And what we could say is that below a certain meso mixing time scale, our crystallization was consistent. And above a certain meso mixing time scale, our crystallization was inconsistent for this specific um, model condition. So what we've been able to determine is actually a threshold for premature nucleation or inconsistent nucleation that's associated with this meso mixing time scale from a purely theoretical perspective, but also combined with this experimental result from our initial characterization. So now what we can do is we can run these computational fluid dynamic uh, models under a different set of experimental conditions. So instead of adding our antisolvent close to the wall, in this model on the right-hand side, we're adding our antisolvent close to the impeller shaft. And what we believe is that we can guarantee much faster antisolvent incorporation uh, by adding our antisolvent close to the impeller because this is a downward pumping impeller that will pull the antisolvent in much quicker. And now what we can do is again calculate these meso mixing time scales. And what we observe is that by adding our antisolvent close to the impeller shaft, we can bring the meso mixing time scale much, much lower for every single addition rate that we might want to choose. And it is below this threshold for premature nucleation. So from here, it was a simple case of repeating our experiments. But instead of adding antisolvent at the wall of our vessel, for these experiments, we added antisolvent at the center of the vessel close to the impeller shaft. And what you can really begin to see now is a much more consistent behavior of this crystallization process, uh, one that's much more predictable and much more in line with what one would expect from classical theory. So as we increase our addition rate, you can see the metastable zone width is getting wider. And also these error bars are much less dramatic at these higher addition rates. So we've gone from a case where we have a highly unpredictable, inconsistent crystallization process at a wide range of antisolvent addition rates to one where it is highly consistent across all addition rates. And really, this is only the result of changing our addition location for this crystallization process by a very small amount from the wall of the crystallizer to the center of the crystallizer. That's all that's really changed here. But this modeling that we've done has really helped us confirm that this change would work um, and also gives us some insight into alternative anti-solvent addition um, strategies that we could implement to try and control our crystallization further. So briefly, uh, some acknowledgments. Uh, I'd really like to thank my former colleague at University College Dublin, Mark Barrett. Uh, we highly collaborated on this work, and he did a lot of the computational fluid dynamic modeling. Uh, and there's two nice papers which have been published uh, in this area, which go into a lot more detail beyond what we can do uh, in the scope of this short video. And if anyone is interested, uh, I'd encourage them uh, to check them out. Thank you.